Hi folks, how are you going? Today we're doing a pen and ink workshop. So um, we're doing a still life of some keys. Um, I hope you've uh, watched my films on how to prepare your own ink pens and how to prepare your ink before you use it. This will be a lot of fun, this uh, workshop, and um, stay tuned for further movies. Um, we'll be doing advanced um, pen and ink and uh, watercolour, oils, pastels, acrylics. So have some fun. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a pen and ink of a still life. Um, so just a, an old fashioned bunch of keys. So I prepared my ink. Um, I'm using water soluble ink. If you um, had watched film four, um, I showed you there about the ink, how to dilute it. Um, I also spoke about how to make your own ink pens and also how to stretch um, your own watercolour paper. So now I'm coming in um, with a little bit of strong ink that hasn't been diluted. I've sped up the film. So just roughing in the outline. I use a lot of pen and inks um, in my books, in my book illustration. It's a very quick media to work with and a lot of fun. So I hope by now you've seen my other videos um, or YouTubes on um, very basic pen and ink and you've been doing lots of practice and now we've moved on to this type of thing. So as I say, I'm using a barbecue skewer as a pen. In the earlier film I explained to you how we make the nibs the different size and stuff like that. So please refer to that. I'm using a number 10 watercolour brush. So the ink wasn't quite dry, which was great. Once this particular make of ink dries, it's um, it doesn't really um, smudge when you wet it anymore, which is good and bad. Um, so it's just getting to know the product you're working with. There's a lot of interesting inks on the market and, you know, work with them all. Quite often I use a whole bucket of water, especially if I'm out sketching in the bush in, in ink pen. Um, so you can wash your brushes and you have a lovely lot of, you know, water and you're not continually changing a jam jar or anything like that. Today I'm working on um, Archie's hot pressed watercolour paper, 165 GSM, and I've stretched the paper. I've decided to include a um, little piece of lace cloth in the corner of this picture. Incidentally, the, um, the pens are not finished at all yet. The bottom left hand corner there, um, obviously it's a pen and ink from one of my books. You'll see all the different shades of, uh, or tone, tones if you like, of ink. I've, I've pre-mixed them in the palette, all the different strengths I needed, and numbered them. <coughs> With my different techniques, um, you know, I do oil painting for beginners and advanced and watercolour, basic drawing, colour theory, pastel, that type of thing. It 
if you're just starting in pen and ink, you know, you, nothing wrong with working on photocopying paper. And if you're just doing some quick exercises. I'm just putting in some shadow now that's falling on onto the floor or the ground surface of the picture. In the next episode, which is um, episode 7, I'm doing an advanced pen and ink. Um, it's on a full size sheet of hot pressed watercolour paper, 75 centimetres by 55. And, um, you know, you'll learn how to do spontaneous washes and things like that. It's actually a farm scene with a lot, with a lot of cattle. Um, so that's quite enjoyable. use a lot of tissues as when I'm doing my pen and inks um, dab off when I've put too much ink on Doing a still life is is really good. <clears throat> like even if it's something as simple as like a an egg, um, putting the egg on different coloured paper if you like, or pieces of cloth of different colours, and really trying to study all the tones. So like the white paper would be like the lightest tone, and um, thinking about working towards watercolours and stuff like that and um, a very pale yellow would be a very light tone so every, every color can be can be broken down into a tone so if you're just starting off with art um, ink's really a really good way to, to start it can give you a lot of quick practice with tonal value this is just an exercise here today but um, with all artworks, um, or I'll say all artworks, most artworks, they're balanced. The actual finished art piece is balanced because of the tonal value, um, and so each each colour has its own tone, if you like. With the colour theory workshop that I do, um, it's a seven-hour workshop broken down into five uh, pieces. Um, you can learn all about tonal value and colours to use in future pictures. For people just beginning, it's really good to take the guesswork out of the colours to put in your paintings. Like if you just do a painting where the sky is blue and the grass is green, it can be very boring. But with once you've done the colour theory course, you'll um, have an insight into making your your painting sing, if you know. That's just a little picture there on the right from one of my books. And I hope you've enjoyed watching this today. And, um, you know, you can find me on Facebook. Um, just search for Janet Skinner, artist and author. Or you can find me on my website, which is janetskinner.com. Um, so, um, yeah, if you subscribe to the channel, that's great. And um, if you press the little bell thing each time one of my new films is uploaded, you'll get that. So 
always good putting in the last little bit of detail. Hi guys, it's Smidge here. Hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for all future uploads. Our contact details are also in the link in the description below.